Oh, this is going to be a very short explanation of my Iron Trap Door Bad Apple video. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. So the first step was taking the music video from YouTube, which is in 360p, and we extract it with FFmpeg, and then we get all the frames in this folder, starting numbered from 1, and then it goes on. The next step is actually processing the frames of the video. So I have this script in um, Node. It basically just takes every single frame, it loads them with this image processing library called Sharp. It is um, halving the size because the full size of uh, 360p was too large for the amount of Minecraft blocks. And then it is comparing every single pixel to the last one. And if it is different, then it records that as a difference and it figures out whether it should be a trapdoor or if it should be an open trapdoor or a closed trapdoor. And so that's how I'm saving on the amount of commands in each function is because it only does it when a block actually changes between frames. And that way there isn't 40,000 plus commands for every single frame. And some frames are almost instant to render. So you can see if the average of all the red, green, and blue channels is less than 128, then we consider it to be a zero, which means it should be black and the trapdoor should be open. Otherwise, the trapdoor should be closed. And so down here, we are just adding to our output that we are setting a trapdoor at the specific location that it should be. And then with either a four or a zero based on what kind of trapdoor it is. And then last, we add to the end of the frame um, function to set the specific coordinates with the redstone block. And this coordinate will be important later. And then we're just outputting that into an MC function file in this frames folder. This function down here just creates a separate draw MC function file to determine what our frame score is and then depending on what it is, execute a certain Minecraft function. So that results in these MC function files in this folder. And you can see this is the first frame and it is every single block, every single pixel, which means there's 43,000 of them. And the last one on every frame will be this set block on this specific coordinate to redstone block as we just talked about. And so you can also see that these frames are just the redstone blocks because until I think about frame 40, the entire frame is black. So now you can see it's changing stuff. So now that we have all those functions created, um, we can go into Minecraft and reload, which I'm not going to do because it's very slow because there's about 6,000 functions with some of which have 40,000 commands in them. But the secret to this world is that we have a little bit of a secret room here. <laughs> uh, so this is where all the command block stuff uh, is. And this is the opposite of, if you watch the video, this is over on the other corner is where I was breaking the blocks and placing them back down. So this is the redstone block that all those commands were setting. It's setting this delay score to 80, which is four seconds. So in this line here, we first test to see if our delay score is between 10 and 20. And if it is, then we'll set a pumpkin on my head. So this starts at 80 and it will start counting down until it gets to zero. And then when it gets to zero, that's when it will start drawing the next frame. And so we're adding four seconds of artificial delay. And so when it gets close to the end, it's setting a pumpkin on my head. And then when we get even closer to the end, we're removing the pumpkin from my head. And I'll explain that in a second. And then when we get to actually frame or delay zero, then we're adding one to my frame score, which means that it's going to advance onto the next frame. 
and then it runs the draw command which will then figure out which function needs to be called to draw the next frame. And then this just checks to see if my frame is above zero then we are going to remove one frame every tick. So basically what this does is that once a frame has been drawn at the very end after it's already gone through all the commands to set the specific blocks it sets this command which will then wait four seconds and then after that four seconds is passed, then it will go on to draw the next frame. And so now the only thing we have to explain is the pumpkin. So usually in Minecraft, when you put a pumpkin on your head, it creates this full screen effect where you have a pumpkin face and your entire view is blurred. But instead, I just replaced that texture with just this red dot in the upper left corner. We're setting the pumpkin near the end of the delay, which means it's about to draw the next frame. But before it does that, we're setting a pumpkin on my head, which creates that red dot right there. So in order to start recording the video, I first run this command, which just sets all the trapdoors to closed. And then I run this command twice to make it go to the beginning to make sure it doesn't start by itself. And then I go up to here, I broke a few blocks. And then I just started placing them. And then I came up here, and I sped this up in the video. And I have some commands down there that I didn't explain to just set this to barriers when I'm stepping on it. And then when I'm up in the air, setting it to air. And so then it goes. So what it did is once I was up in the air, it set the frame to zero and then run around that draw command to start off the sequence. So each frame takes at least four seconds to draw because we're adding that four seconds of artificial delay plus however long it takes to actually set the blocks which for example the first frame can take a few seconds. Okay you can see it's starting now. A lot of people wanted me to go close to it and so and a lot of people were wondering what it sounded like and of course because you know no because we're setting the blocks it doesn't actually sound like anything so it's it's kind of disappointing but if we had like redstone torches um, underneath these it would probably be too laggy and that whole method that we're doing of waiting until the entire frame has been drawn and then setting that redstone block wouldn't work because it would uh, it wouldn't have to wait for the entire frame to be drawn to start drawing the next frame and so the only solution for that would having to be add a bunch of ar more artificial delay and once you start adding like 10 seconds of delay then it starts getting to the point where it would take like 18 hours to render the entire thing so here's some footage of it closer up I got a stick Ooh I got a stick Ooh I got a stick Oh, oh yeah I got a stick I got a stick Good stick Ooh yeah yeah I got a stick Ooh yeah I got a stick So now I'm back up here and you can see I'm running the auto hotkey script. And so every time that the red dot appears, it means that the frame has been fully rendered and it can take a screenshot and capture the frame. All this auto hotkey script does is look for that red pixel in the corner of the screen. And if it's found it for the first time in a row, then it sends the F2 key, which takes a screenshot. Or if it finds it and it's already sent the F2 key for that frame, then it does nothing. So once I waited and recorded the entire thing, I took all of the screenshot files and I, I put them into this folder. And these are the original screenshot files in this um, backup two folder. I have a backup one folder, which is the first time I recorded it, where I recorded it with one second of delay, which was not enough. And there was an incorrect amount of files. You can see there's only 6,551 here. In the actual one, there's 6,572. And so it got way out of sync really quickly. And so I added delay and recorded it again. 
And so these are just the original files, but I also put them in this folder and they just had their normal name with the date in it. And so I have another script right here, which just loads everything in the entire folder and sees if it's a PNG and then it renames it starting from zero. And so now that we have all these frames with the numbers, we can use FFmpeg again to put them into one final video file of the entire animation, which then I just put into Premiere and edited it into the video. So that's the explanation of the video. Again, if there's anything that I didn't answer in this video that you would like answered, please leave a comment. And thanks for watching. So a few days after I recorded the rest of this video, I decided to try to use play sound to create the sound of the trapdoors.